Hi everyone, welcome back to the Academy here at Chesterfield Golf Club. It's lovely to have you along again in this Stop Slicing series. This is episode three. My name is Warren Bennett and this little fluff ball here is called Trev. He hasn't got his bed in the Academy today, so he's probably going to be wandering around and biting his tail like he's doing. Um, so this is all about the, the downswing. So we've done the address and the grip and the backswing. Now we're going to try and layer what we've learned previous into the downswing. This is where the fun starts because obviously this is where we're now creating our maximum speed into the ball and probably the most important. And what we said in the previous video, the golf swing is a chain reaction and if you can get yourself in a more neutral position, especially one that's going to encourage the club to hit from the inside, you're going to find it much easier. So that's why I recommend looking at the previous videos because once you can get them correct beforehand, it's going to make this much, much easier. And there are some pitfalls you must not do if you want to create more of a straighter um, golf shot. So let's get on to it. Hopefully this one will settle down. And let's get on to the downswing. Right, let's get going with this downswing. So one quick recap. The more you can get in this coiled position instead of a tilted position, the easier this is going to be. So let's get up into this coil position. We're going to twist we're going to make sure we've got spine angle away from the ball here and that happens by your um, the coil of your um, torso here. Right, so now we're in this position too from this wide position of our arms. That's why we had um, emphasis on this width on the way back. Now we've got more of a chance to drop this right elbow into position. I'm going to give you a few ways that you can do this and feel this but mainly it's this top of the backswing position. What you're feeling is your head still behind the ball, a little bit of weight shift onto your left foot and your right elbow into your side. So from my perspective, my hands are right out. What you don't want to do is start pulling down. Yes, it's a called a downswing, but the main thing is the club face from the behind view, the club face is going down because my hand is going out here. If my hand goes down from the behind view, if my hand goes down and I start pulling down, look where the club face goes. Under speed, that will work even worse. So it will come right out here and then you're going to have to back away. So what I see a lot of people doing is trying to pull down and it's wrong. Makes it even worse, in fact. So what you need to do is try, and I'm going to put a couple of slides on with some two of the best ball strikers that's ever lived. You would have heard of one of them, but you wouldn't, probably may not have heard of the other one. One's Ben Hogan and one's Mo Norman. These guys are showing you an exaggerated feel. So I've got my right elbow touching my body. It's in front of my hip, so I haven't gone too early here. So it's in front of my hip. This is where this backswing is so important. The more you can get coil behind the ball, I've got spine tilt away from the ball. It's not on top of. Now the majority of that is built in now. Not all of it, you might have to practice this little drop down exercise. But really your hands are gonna go out more towards the ball than they are your feet. So it's less down, because the club then comes out. It's more out, but the club stays way behind you. See that? The club stays behind you because your right elbow's in. If my right elbow moves away from me, so does the club. So this is where it's extremely important to be in this wide position because your arms now have somewhere to go. And on that theme, apart from short pitching, and it's only short pitching, kind of pockets, pocket um, distance either side of the ball, do not do the towel under your arm exercise. Now I used to do that back in the day, thinking connection was a good thing. Well, connection is not a good thing because the more you have your arms connected to you, the more your arms going to be bent. And on the way down to create power, you're going to have to straighten it. And there's you're coming over the top, casting. So the club catches up with your hands, loss of power, you won't be able to release it correctly. So a lot of things can come out of the wash doing that. So let's get back up to the top. Drop, you can see not a lot happens with my top half. The bottom half is moving slightly lateral and my arms are dropping. So you can do this exercise at home, maybe 10 or so, pull, 
out. My hands are going out, kind of, between my feet and the, and the ball. They're not going more towards my feet. I'd rather them out towards the ball more. And you can see that with this exaggerated look with these guys that are trying to feel this. Now you're in the position to hit and release. You can't release from up here. You're waiting, you're delaying. And this is where this backswing and this tilt back, and what's called, you might have heard, waiting for it. But what you're looking for in this halfway down position, you're looking for gap between my arms there. You can definitely see that from behind. Now you're in the position because your hands are now way out in front of you. The club's way back behind you, underneath your arm. So you can see underneath your right arm, the club drops. And you can see from the edge of the screen, the more I, the more I have my hands going out, the more the club head goes straight down the edge of the screen. See that? So if you ever look at that wall drill that I did, that's basically what you want to do. You want to take your backswing, so even if I get it across the line, it doesn't really matter. You're looking for the club to come down the wall, but the only way I can do that is my hands and arms going this way. So this is the position you're after. This big gap from the front view, you're going to see my right elbow still under my left. It's exaggerated, because what you've got to try and practice is an exaggeration. You're trying to exaggerate a hook and if I tried to hook it, that's what I would do. I would stay back behind the ball and I would really get my elbow in and that makes the club go back behind me. One of the best ball strikers in the world, Lee Trevino, that's the position he was in. Coming down to the ball, the club was way back behind me. Way back behind him, I should say. And then from here, all you're doing is releasing. I shouldn't say all you're doing, because obviously if you're not used to that, it's very difficult. So backswing. Little lateral sway, we're not kicking our hips, we're not throwing our, thrusting our hips forward. It's just a little natural, letting the weight slowly get onto our um, left side with our arms out here. So you're kind of staying back behind the ball. From the front view, you're going to see my head doesn't really move back. I'm staying back and waiting for it. And I haven't got my foot up in the air yet. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. So you can do this little pump exercise and it's more out, exaggerated, it's out. But you don't want to do it too much because you want your right elbow in. So you want some sort of reference point. The reference point is my hands are out, clubs back behind me, and I can really feel shut off still, closed. Remember, someone who slices is a very open too quickly. Descending blow. So to be a good driver of the ball and to keep loft on the club and to create, create speed, you've got to stay back behind the ball. Okay, from here, all you're doing from here, I shouldn't, again, I shouldn't say all you're doing because if it's new, it's going to be difficult. But all you're doing, this angle you see between my left arm and the shaft or my right forearm and the shaft, all you're doing from here is now releasing because you're now letting that angle go of your left wrist. So your left wrist is kind of doing this back into impact. And if you see the hold the tray exercise, that's what we're doing. We're doing a flat hand, right hand palm up to square. You're not moving your bottom, your top half at all. You're allowing the release of the club into the ball. So backswing, I believe in a lot of rehearsal swings. Drop, hold, check it, club behind me, elbow touching, I'm staying back behind it. It's exaggerated a little bit. I'd like, you're probably hooking it from here, which is a good thing. Then from here, you're just releasing it into impact. Not really moving. You can see impact position from behind. My right elbow's still in, under my left, which is really important if you wanna take away that slice. Drop. Take your time, don't rush, release. Now you can see the path now is exaggerated into out. And you'll see in the next video, the club will then start moving away out because obviously it's a byproduct of what goes before. Okay, so remember, golf swing's a chain reaction. That's why we started from the alignment and the address and the grip. Onto the backswing, 
and onto the downswing. We're not rushing this. Everything's nice and soft. There's no tension. Obviously, we're going to have to speed up a little bit when we come to hit the ball and to play and to practice. But you're working on these mechanical feelings and the, and the positions your hands and arms need to swing through. But let's face it, in a perfect world, that's great. And I still would like you to practice that as much as you can until the next video. But if you've got a game tomorrow, a couple of little um, tips to give you. And I will be doing videos in the near future about this, going into more detail. So one feeling that Jack Nicholas always said was keep your back to the target. So what he's saying there is you're not trying to spin out too quickly. You're trying to keep your back to the target for as long as you can. And that's, remember, that's what we just practiced. Remember, your sh look at the shoulders now are going to be really shut, which means my left shoulder blade here is still aiming towards the target. I haven't spun yet. So the longer you can keep your club, your back to the target, the more your arms are allowed to drop in the slot. You can see here, if I wanted to hook the ball, that's the position I'm looking for. Everything closed into the ball because I'm now delaying my chest from opening which allows my arms and hands to come down and through and obviously the club. Um, another one is more difficult to describe because you can see it more from my perspective but if you can imagine looking down at a golf ball and it's a clock face. Now I always say a lot to my students it's a, the, the feeling, remember it's only a feeling, don't really want you to do it this much, but the feeling is trying to hit the ball at four o'clock. So you're trying to get the club coming into the ball at four o'clock. Now I know that looks extreme, but you have to feel sometimes a mile to gain an inch. So a lot of players who obviously slice the ball come over the top and they're hitting north of three o'clock looking down. What you're trying to do is south of three o'clock. So the more you feel, it might feel extreme, it might feel like you push it and you're going to block it. But that's a good thing because you're looking to try and get this club as far inside as you can. So it's a great little exercise, trying to hit the ball at four o'clock, which again is the same mechanics as what we were doing just by breaking the downswing down. So remember, don't get fooled into a downswing because it's not down. The club face is the thing that comes straight down until about here and then obviously it's got to come out. But don't worry about that because centrifugal force or centripetal force, I think it is, will throw the club face out. You can't stop it. But what you don't want this thing is to start coming out here and then you're in all sorts of trouble. Then you're going to have to do some compensation, especially if you want to um, cure your slice. What you need to do is, it's not watertight all this. We're human beings, so things do go wrong. But what you've got to do is understand the mechanics and why it's happening and then how you can get out of it as quick and as easy as possible. Okay, so that's the end of the third episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions, um, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. I'll do my best. I'm getting back to hopefully everyone who's commenting. Um, yeah, and to all the new subscribers, it's great to have you along. And, um, you know, we're going to put out more content. If there's anything specific you'd like me to uh, show on the channel, please don't, please don't hesitate to, to get in touch. Okay, until a couple of days' time, where we're going to work on the follow-through. And then the final one is going to be trying to gel this together and give you some, uh, some golf course tips and hints. Okay, so lovely to see you. And... Um, I'll see you on the next one from myself and the furry one. Many thanks and see you soon.